And then you say that you're treated inhumanely because they took the laces off your kicks as you show them pictures of your family on your smartphone. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with laughing theatrically at this. Sorry, uh, he's, but he's crying though. Good. This story encapsulates everything that is wrong with, to use the term mainstream media, CNN certainly. This is a story that CNN uh, is using, they're trying to draw an emotional uh, line between you and the people who they're displaying. So it, they, first off, let's, let, let's be clear. They want you to feel guilty for believing in illegal immigration. They want you to feel guilty and racist for uh, wanting illegal immigrants to be deported, particularly felonious illegal immigrants. They want you to feel guilty for that, and they want you to feel guilty for that. They want to draw, they want to draw the parallel that that's bad and racist because they connect, can connect that to Donald Trump. So they bring out this piece where they bring out people crying, sob stories of people who are being uh, deported for the human interest side of the story, and then they also try and hit you with numbers to make the economic argument that, well, you know what, this doesn't even make economic sense. All of it is complete and total garbage. Uh, let, let's go to their, their setup. It's called ICE Air, an airline funded by the U.S. government and run by Immigration and Customs Enforcement, a fleet of commercial planes flying deported immigrants out of the United States, each passenger costing U.S. taxpayers an average of $2,000 last year. You say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> I, can't, I can't fly to London from New York, business class $2,000. Um, and it also makes it seem a whole lot different, by the way in the spirit of, of being balanced. Um, this is not how Ice Air sells it in their commercials. Somewhere high above the clouds lies a simple dream. The dream to travel worry-free, where delayed overbooked flights are a distant memory, where lost luggage is a lost problem, where you can sit back, relax, and let us do the planning. Because this dream has only one destination you've arrived. That dream is Ice Air. Ice Air. Welcome home. <laughs> Those battle helmet surface at the exact right time. Good job, Aaron, the intern, for editing that. I'll give you that one. My gosh, CNN, you were lazy with this one. Uh, the cost of deporting them, 2000 per illegal immigrant. Okay. Uh, on average, according to Heritage Foundation, illegal, immigra illegal immigrants burden the taxpayer with $54 billion per year. That's uh, about $5,000 per immigrant. So hold on, so let's do that math. I think <laughs> yeah. a one-time cost of 2000 seems to be a better deal for the American taxpayer than uh, $5,000 for prorated forever. <laughs> that's, not even a, that's not even an investment at that point. That's, that's just a bargain. It's just a bargain at <laughs> yeah. that point. They're, they're the Jean-Claude Van Damme of, of illegal immigrants. You just scoop them up in the bargain bin. Exactly. And toss them in the <laughs> checkout. Um, but here's something else that's interesting to me. Because a lot of these people, not all of them, are uh, felons. People who've committed felonies. Well, I, get, I don't know if coming here illegally, I don't think that's a felony. I'm not entirely sure. No. But a lot of these people have committed additional felonies. So let's add up the cost on the taxpayer of $5,000 per year. The average cost of incarcerating a felon is $30, $32,000 per year. So now we're at $37,000 per year for an illegal immigrant who's committed a felony. And these, by the way, are getting there in the express aisle to be deported right now, okay? $2,000 seems like pocket change. And by the way, where are all the people talking about overcrowding? Where are all the people who, the, the potheads saying, our prisons are overcrowded in the military, the military prison for profit industrial complex. Okay, well good. We're trying to meet you halfway. We don't want to crowd our prisons with people who have no business being here in the first place. Let's send them over to Mexico. They probably won't incarcerate them. We know that. But at least we won't have to deal with them. Can we find some common ground here? No? <laughs> the numbers don't add up. And that's why they try and reinforce their argument to make sure that you feel guilty and you feel racist by turning the tears up to 11 with their personal interest story. Let's give you some examples that CNN thinks is putting their best foot forward. When Trump says bad hombres. No. My DUI, that's what they got me with. I was never selling drugs. David Padilla is one of 135 Mexican nationals who arrived on this flight from El Paso to Mexico City. It's a scene repeated three times a week, year round. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> he didn't sell drugs, he just committed a DUI. Was that a, is that a minor offense now? 
Mothers Against Drunk Drive, this isn't a thing. All, so all of a sudden, because their 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 skin has slightly more melanin, we're, we're gonna down, oh, he just had a DUI. Well, first off, he came here illegally, crime, and had a DUI. <laughs> By the way, DUI, de, Bla, de Blasio doesn't even want to deport immigrants with DUIs. We're talking about a city here that wanted to ban big gulps. <laughs> <laughs> But Mr. Hernandez driving on a, a case of Corona as well, we'll let that slide because we're tolerant. I don't, I don't know what kind of a space time warp I've jumped into. Uh, 28 drunk driving deaths per day. That's over 10,000 last Gosh. year in 2016. So th this is the so these are the sob stories that they want you to, and they, want, they, they roll this and they want you to feel like a horrible person for laughing out loud and saying, Good, of course. Let, let's go to their next uh, clip. It's just so hard. They just, they just pull you away. You can't even say bye to anybody. It's so hard. Kind of like all those uh, families who never got to say goodbye to the people who were hit by people who were driving under the influence. Next clip. I would have been like pulled over the day that it happened without Trump being in office. I think I would have been able to go home. Well, you know what? Okay, the man has a point here. <laughs> He's saying, if you know, under Barack Obama, I would have been pulled over with a DUI and would have been allowed to stay. You know what? I'll take your word for it. And now he's saying, because Donald Trump's president, he was caught being in this country illegally and committing a crime with a DUI and is now being deported courtesy of ICE Air. Put one on the scoreboard for President Trump. <laughs> Make America sober again. Okay, I think we have, I think we have another one here coming up. Uh, there are a few sub stories that they show. Yeah, terrible, porque. No, 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 no habla, es, no habla English, not on this show, okay? <laughs> we don't allow that. Ouch. They don't She's treat not... you like a human being. Padilla, who claims ice cut off his shoelaces, says none of it Why is enough to keep him from his family in the United States. Okay, listen, the reason that we're laughing here is so that you don't feel guilty about laughing. Because everyone who watched this special in a room with friends, so, crying, they don't treat you like a human being. And if you laughed, everyone like, you're a horrible human being. No, no, you should laugh. As a matter of fact, you should, you should laugh theatrically. Ha 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 you see this? That guy's an ass. Let me tell you why. They don't treat you like a human being. They cut off my shoelaces. They cut off your shoelaces. That's right, because they don't want you to, I don't know, tie someone else together. I don't know if you can hang yourself. They get rid of belts in prisons. They're about to handcuff you. You don't have shoelaces. So that's his litmus test. They don't even treat me like a human being. By the way, let me show you my family. You're going to open up your old wallet? No, iPhone. <laughs> Look at this. I'm not treated like a human being. They took, they took the shoelaces off my kicks. Samsung Galaxy 7. I don't, it's like, you're not treated like a human being. You come here illegally, okay? That's already a crime. Not to mention all the people, you, you've already screwed people who've been waiting in line legally. We have people who are trying to get to work on this show into the country legally as interns because they are brilliant, brilliant creative artists and that's hard to come by. You screw those people, you make the process harder, then you get a DUI, which results in thousands and thousands of deaths per year, is also inconsiderate, and you probably don't know how to use your turn signal. Then you talk about how the previous president would have let it slide, and so it must be racist for the current president to not let it slide. And then you say that you're treated inhumanely because they took the laces off your kicks as you show them pictures of your family on your smartphone. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with laughing theatrically at this. Sorry, uh, he's, but he's crying though. Good. It's only racist if the United States does it. I knew a guy who had a DUI, or maybe it was a DWI in Canada. He was coming from Europe. He can't go there for 10 years. Wow. This happens in every country. If you enter a country illegally mm -hmm. and you commit another crime, they're not super lenient. Let's go south of the border because learning about people's cultures is appreciating their cultures. What are Mexico's immigration laws like? Well, first off, felonies are punishable by two to 10 years. They're pretty harsh. And they're <laughs> even more harsh on felonies from uh, people who are there illegally. They don't use a politically correct term. They don't call you undocumented worker. They call you Amelie and throw you to the border. Um, Mexico. <laughs> Here's their policy. Deports foreigners who are deemed detrimental to economic or national interests, violate Mexican law, are not physically or mentally healthy, or lack the necessary funds for their sustenance and for their dependence. It almost reads like a Margaret Sanger script. <laughs> <laughs> so let's be clear. Mexico doesn't just deport you if you commit a crime. Mexico deports you unless you're a sugar daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even think about trying to get on the public dole. You have to be making more 
than the average sombreroed friend over there. Otherwise, they don't want you and they send you back. They send you back if you are not in their best economic or national interest. Do you see that nationalism there? Nationalism is only racist when the United States does it. And you, you, which is ultimately ironic because we're a country that don't really have a national racial identity. You can be a nationalist in the United States and that's represented by the Constitution. You're a nationalist in the sense that you believe our culture created by the laws as per the Constitution, Bill of Rights, have fostered a culture of freedom that, by the way, when liberals say, we have no culture, no, we. Our main export is culture. That's why people are doing whatever they can to get here. Am I a nationalist in the sense that I think our nation is better than Mexico? Yes, they're nationalists and that it's a race of tiny brown people. I'm a nationalist and I think the Constitution kicks ass and I think that it's created the best country that's ever existed. But that's, somehow that's more racist than what they do over there in Mexico. <laughs> Immigration, right? A lot of people, they have problems, amnesty, okay, we understand it, or anchor babies is a term used. I, that's kind of complicated. Yeah, sure. Like, the yeah. kid didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. And I can see both sides of that argument. It's at some point, someone has to be punished. Uh, you know, you had the argument on immigration where Trump was absolutely blasting Marco Rubio, and then his plan kind of put forward is effectively the same as Marco Rubio. <laughs> yeah. um, but before we even get to, you know, leftists always say, you know, Republicans are the party of no. We want to find common ground. Okay. Let's get rid of amnesty before we even get there, or before we even get to anchor babies. I understand that these are issues that need to be discussed. But right here, right now, we are talking about deporting illegal immigrants who are only found exclusively because they got caught committing crimes. How is that? If we can't find common ground there, there is no common ground to be found. It's like, listen, okay, before amnesty, before we get to anchor babies, what about just deporting the guy who got a DUI? I can't believe you. Well, shit, there's no common ground. <laughs> there's no possible way we can have a logical discussion. The guy, okay, the guy committed a DUI three times. We caught him. It's only going to cost us $2,000. Can we deport him? I think that's insensitive. This is why I don't say I'm a centrist. We'll have anyone on the show. And we'll, I say this with Dave Rubin. We'll, we'll, we'll argue. We'll discuss with anybody. But I am a conservative. I am very right-leaning. The problem is there is no centrism for reasonable people. The left won't meet you in the center. They think you're racist if you want to deport felons who aren't here legally in the first place. And you know why? You know why it's considered racist if the United States does it? Even though, we're, again, we're talking about the Constitution. There's nothing racist in being proud of your country. It's not like North Korea who are uh, having propaganda videos, launching missiles. It's not like Mexico that wants to deport you if they have the wrong shade, color of skin. The reason everyone gets all up in arms and they hate it when the United States actually goes out there and proudly touts their national interests is because, you know what? The United States is the prom queen. We are that hot chick who everyone looks at and everyone wants to be with that hot chick. In the entire world, we're the best woman in the room and everyone wants to be going to prom with us but you know what a lot of them can't people don't get to dance with the prom queen so guess what happens if you're ugly you see it with fat pride activists if you say i'm proud of my body and you're fat and ugly everyone says you're brave if you're beautiful and you say i'm proud of my body here's a bikini picture everyone calls you an uppity bitch that's what happens with the united states we're good looking we're successful so if we're proud of it it's considered nationalistic it's considered racist but if the crappy countries that have contributed zero zero to modern society other than some cool decapitations that were presented in a Mel Gibson film are somehow proud of their country, we're going to allow it, your honor. If we want to talk about common ground, I, I, I would take it further than that. Not people with DUIs, but a lot of these people, not all Mexicans, okay, I'm not saying all Mexicans are rapists, but the people who are here who are committing rapes and murders and are joining and creating gang violence, I, I, think, I think you put them on an exclusive private first class ice air jet. subscribe by clicking the button that says subscribe. If not, there's a strong chance that you're an Armenian genocide denier. Wink, wink. I think you know what I'm talking about. But uh, head on over there if this isn't the channel for you. I'm sure you'll find something there that you deem very insightful and informative. Uh, also, I request that you come back here afterward and immediately leave a negative comment because we read those and those affect our lives directly. We care about them because we care about you.